What's up, guys? Matt Brown here for PlayPicks.com and TheLines.com. Going to talk to you about Monday Night Football tonight between the Browns and the Jets. Guys, while you are here, please hit that subscribe button down below. Please like this video. Please get into the comments. Let us know which side you're playing, if you're playing the total, or if you're just going to take a pass on this one, perfectly fine as well. One of the advantages we have is betters. The books have to put up all the games. We don't have to bet all the games. So if this doesn't really seem like anything you're interested in, then of course, just take a pass. Don't hate bet a game like this or anything uh, along the way here, guys. Of course, playpicks.com for a full written preview of this game here. You can head over to the lines.com where we have a cool little odds tracker now as well as you can see right here where we'll take a look at the lines here in just a second, but you can flip between the New Jersey and Pennsylvania lines. So all kinds of stuff going on and very excited about all of that stuff. All right. So let's talk about the Browns heading over to take on the Jets here. We'll take a look at this line and you guys are going to notice that this thing uh, certainly moved a ton here. So here we sit uh, with this game, we'll flip to the game lines here, six and a half in favor of the Browns in this one. Now, of course, this was a game that opened at two and a half and the news came out that Trevor, uh, that, that Sam Darnold actually was going to miss this game and be replaced by Trevor Simeon, Sam Darnold, of course, dealing with mono. And with that, this line, this game was taken down line reposted at six and a half, 45 and a half to 50 on the money line here at DraftKings over at William Hill. We're at six and a half, 280 on the money line, 45 flat as far as the total over on FanDuel. Six and a half here as well, 270, 45 and a half. I'll scroll here if you want to read all along a little bit here with what Juan thinks about how this game is going to play out. Um, Look, it's two and a half, as it was mentioned everywhere, whenever this thing was originally posted, then moves to six and a half. It has dipped to six at some points, but really has gotten uh, bought right back to six and a half in this thing here. About 75% of the bets, 75% of the money coming in on the Browns in this one. Now, hard to decipher whether that was at the number that was at two and a half. This is just an overall total here, so I can't tell you how much of that money came in after it moved to six and a half. But I can just tell you in the overall ticket count and the overall handle here, about three quarters of the money on the Browns in this thing. If we're looking at the weather, if that uh, we're still kind of early here, we're not really getting into bad weather season. So it's going to be in the low 70s. No real wind to speak of. Maybe a passing shower. That's about it. But uh, nothing for us to worry about here. Of course, we'll monitor these weather situations here in about, you know, month to six weeks when it really starts kind of cooling down. Maybe we get some wind. Maybe we get some snow, things like that. Browns, of course, trying to bounce back here from that week one debacle where they just listen the, the a little Try not to overreact to the box score of that one, if you can, for the Browns, because it's a little deceiving here. Baker Mayfield threw three interceptions, actually, in the fourth quarter of that game. They also turned it over on downs two more times late in that game because they were trying to come back. So, again, box score is a little bit more deceiving than how the, the game went actually there. They were actually right in it uh, going into the fourth quarter there. Browns also... When we say we kind of want to take that grain with uh, that that game with a little bit of grain of salt, eighteen penalties for 182 yards in that game for the Browns. I mean, that's just completely absurd. I mean, absolutely unheard of. So certainly something that is not going to get repeated in the game tonight. We're talking the Jet side, of course, they blew that lead against the Bills last week. Bills were able to come back and nip them in that game, and of course that was with. Sam Darnold under center. As far as injuries go, I'll scroll down a little bit if you want to keep reading along. Safety Demarius Randall out with a concussion for the Browns. Running back Dontrell Hilliard is out for the Browns as well. On the Jets side, now this is where it just gets interesting. Of course, we talked about Sam Darnold, and he's ruled out with Mono, so it's going to be Trevor Simeon under center. Also, Quincy Inunua, wide receiver there, out for the season with a neck injury. Starting linebacker C.J. Mosley is also out for this Jets team. Defensive tackle Quinton Williams is out for the Jets. Le'Veon Bell is going to play, but he had an MRI on his shoulder because something was bothering him in his shoulder. He is going to play at least, but still obviously a little bit banged up. And then Demarius Thomas, you know, they just acquired him in a trade from 
the Patriots. He is also questionable with a hamstring, so tons and stuff. Jamal Adams, the safety, was kind of dealing with a hip issue as well in practice this week. So tons and tons and tons of injury stuff going on for the Jets in this thing. I'll flip back over here so we can take a look at the lines as we're as we're going. Um, huge advantage here for the Browns on the offensive side of the ball, right? With their pass catchers versus the Jets secondary. I mean, the Jets secondary, John Brown, who is certainly no Odell Beckham. John Brown went seven catches for 123 and a touchdown and was just open a ton. It just was open downfield a ton against this Jets team here. But really on the Brown side, it's going to come down to, can they just give Baker Mayfield enough time to actually throw the ball? Can they keep the pocket clean? Can they keep him upright? The guy was sacked five times last week. So this is, I imagine this is going to be a very big focus for the Browns this week is better pass protection on the Jets side. Of course, Trevor Simeon, 13 and 13 is an NFL starter. It's Trevor Simeon, right? We've seen this. We know what we're getting. We're getting a below, just below league average quarterback, you know, a below average quarterback here for, I mean, big, big step down from Sam Darnold for sure. I know it doesn't sound like it maybe, but it is. Trevor Simeon is nowhere near as talented as Sam Darnold. So if we're looking at the pace of this game. If you're wondering, you know, about the total and maybe how this could play out as far as pace goes, probably two slow teams here. Now we're only one game into the season, so we don't have a, definitive look at how these teams are going to play but the Browns actually played at one of the slowest paces in the league last week even though they were still trying to like come from behind they were never really you know ahead in that game securely ahead in that game still played at one of the slowest paces in the league and the Jets were actually in the lower kind of third of the league as well through one week as far as pace goes so you would imagine that they would actually slow that down even more because why would you want to run more plays with Trevor Simeon under center with him having, you know, all of a few days to prepare for this game? I mean, it wasn't announced for Sam that Sam Darnold was going to miss this game because of mono until Thursday morning. So certainly, you know, I can't imagine them wanting to run a faster pace to get their inexperienced, not as good quarterback to get off more plays. You would think that it would be go just the opposite. You'd actually try to slow things down and keep him from having to to make as many plays for you there. Um, flip back over to the lines here so you can just take a look at DraftKings where we're where we're looking at um, on the defensive side of the ball here Browns you would think that this is one of those situations of where you basically sell out you do everything you possibly can to make it to where Le'Veon Bell can't beat you I mean it's Trevor Simeon under quarterback you already lost Qu- Quincy and Nunwa as a pass catcher it doesn't look like Demarius Thomas is going to be even if he does play is going to be 100% and plus he's only been on the team for a week and a half as well Robbie Anderson's kind of a one trick pony of of downfield, you know, big time splash plays downfield catches. Well, I mean, that certainly kind of gets nullified with Trevor Simeon under under center. So it really comes down to, hey, don't let Le'Veon Bell beat us. And if Trevor Simeon can beat us with throwing to, you know, all these other guys, then by all means. So that's how you kind of got to expect on the defensive side of the ball for this Browns team to, to play here on the Jet side. Look, Tremaine Johnson and Daryl Roberts are going to have their hands full here with OBJ, Jarvis Landry, you know, all the pass catchers that they've got there for the Browns. I mean, these are two guys that are consistently ranking in the bottom, you know, 15-ish, 20-ish of of qualified corners, qualified DBs in the league. We saw, again, we just mentioned, saw John Brown go nuts against these guys. John Brown is not Od- Odell Beckham. I expect Odell to have a couple of big, big plays in this game as well. Now, one of the things you'll see from the Jets is, you know, Greg Williams, of course, formerly of the Browns, loves to bring pressure, loves to blitz, loves to almost nearly on every single play, likes to have some some extra person coming at the quarterback. So, again, we go back to pass protection. Can the Browns keep Baker Mayfield clean here so that he's able to connect on some of those big passes to the guys downfield in this thing. Let's talk about some of the picks here um, that I'm kind of looking at. Let's make a case for the over and really at 45 and a half, which I guess you would head over to William Hill if you wanted to play uh, the over where it's 45 flat, as you see right here. I mean, I guess the case for the over for me, and you'll kind of see how I'm phrasing this. Don't really think the over is, is the play in this one, but the case for the over would just be that the if you feel like the Browns are going to blow the Jets out, then there could be an over in this game, right? Because then you can kind of maybe picture yourself, even with Trevor Simeon, ever with whatever, that uh, the Browns go into kind of soft defense in the fourth quarter, and maybe you get, you get a couple of 
of garbage scores from the Jets. And so if you think that the Browns are actually going to just annihilate the Jets here, then you can see this game getting to an over. And so if that's the case, then I could see if you figure out that that's the game plan, that's the path of the way of this game, then yeah, I can get with you there and I could see how you would want to go over in this game. The case of the under for me here is just the fact that I think the Browns are really going to want to utilize Nick Chubb. I mean, as we mentioned in this one, when we come back over here, of course, we we take the half point if we wanted to, if we were going to play the under here. C.J. Mosley is out. Quentin Williams is out. Nick Chubb, I mean, he went 17 carries for 75 yards last week in a game where they weren't really even in control. If they're, they're going to be in control of this game, which I think there's a pretty decent chance they are going to be in control of this game, then you could expect probably Nick Chubb to get 19, 20 touches. We'd, we'd also mentioned that Hilliard, his backup, is going to be out for this game. So um, you would think that means even more Nick Chubb in this situation. And again, with Mosley and Williams out, two run-stopping guys, two big important pieces of this Jets defense, uh, I think you see more Chubb early and often in this thing. And again, another case for the under is just the fact that maybe the Jets can't pull their weight. We mentioned Trevor Simeon is going to be under center in this game. Trevor Simeon, no Quincy Inunua, maybe a banged up Le'Veon Bell. Again, at the very least, he wanted to, he wanted to go see what his shoulder, if maybe there was anything wrong with it. Trevor Simeon, there's a reason he's not starting in this league. It's because he's not very good. So um, maybe the Jets can't pull their part as far as trying to help you get to the over. And this one could be another reason for the under. As far as player props go, um, one of the things I saw, which I think is something that uh, I'm certainly going to play if I can find it here in Vegas. And if you're out on the East Coast, uh, something that I would be all over as well is rushing yards matchup here. Uh, Nick Chubb over Le'Veon Bell. I don't think that the Jets are going to be in a situation to just feed Bell here. My guess would be, and if I was going into this game as the Browns, my guess, my goal would be to shut Le'Veon Bell down. My thing would be, hey, if Trevor Simeon can beat us through the air, then Trevor Simeon can beat us through the air. We're not going to let their best player beat us here. So for me, I would be definitely taking Nick Chubb heads up in most rushing yards. And again, if you especially you can make a kind of a correlated play here. If you think the Browns are going to be in control of this game, then Chubb is certainly going to get more carries because if you think the Browns are going to maybe blow this team out or get up big or whatever it might be, then as we know, that lends more towards the run game as the teams try to salt the clock and get the game over with here. So for me, certainly love Nick Chubb over Le'Veon Bell in head to head rushing yards. If you can find any reception props out there for Le'Veon Bell, uh, as we can kind of see this one right here, four and a half. I'm fairly interested in that because again, I think the Browns kind of control this game. And at that point, I think Le'Veon Bell becomes more of just a receiver and a dump off outlet for Trevor Simeon. than he actually becomes a running back. And so uh, actually kind of fairly interested in the over four and a half catches for Le'Veon Bell because uh figure he will turn into a receiver pretty quickly uh, in this game, as opposed to being just kind of the true running back here, because I expect the Browns to to play well. So I kind of gave it away here. We'll talk about the picks and kind of where I'm going and where I think here. Um, fortunately for me, this is just a, you know full disclosure. We do all the f- disclosure here. I also do a show on Veasan, uh, the Vegas Stats and Information Network, a radio show. And on Wednesday night, I was talking about, you know, I felt this was a really good bounce back spot for the Browns. I felt it was a pretty big overreaction to kind of the box score of their week one game. And I got home on Wednesday night and I was, and I was starting to see some threes start to pop there. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and just get on the Browns while I can still get a two and a half. And then I woke up Thursday morning to the same Darnold news. So lucky me, I got free four points. So that's where my position is heavy in this game tonight. And um That said, if I did not have that bet in my pocket already, I would at least still kind of lean to six and a half here. I guess the only question you can ask yourself is, is any regional bias going to come into play here? And is any Jets money going to come in? And could you get this number for the Browns at a better number closer to kickoff? I mean, as we know, there is, we have seen some East Coast bias. We have certainly seen that sometimes the New Jersey, Pennsylvania-ish market over there does control you know, some of these numbers falling as we get close to to game time when it involves one of the teams from the area. So um, I guess that's the only question you have to ask yourself if you want to play the Browns in this thing is, can you get a better number 
waiting this thing out. I don't know if this thing pushes all the way to a touchdown or not over there on the East Coast. And so I think it's more likely maybe to go to six than it is to go to seven. But uh, I don't know. Maybe some of the uh, maybe some of the Jets fans are, are going to just jump completely off of the bandwagon on this one. And uh, and this thing does get to a touchdown for the Browns. But either way, I'm leaning Browns here. Really like what they uh, how they match up in this game. Certainly think they have just a massive advantage through the air against these corners who have continually gotten lit up all last season and then, you know, through a little bit through this season as well. I just think that whenever you look at the talent that Baker Mayfield is able to play with here, I really, really like that side of the ball for them. I think the thing I like even better is just the under in this game. Now, while I do like the Browns, I don't necessarily think they're going to just completely destroy this Jets team. I don't think it's going. To, we're going to look up. It's going to be one of those 35 to nothing type situations. And then, you know, we get backdoored on the over in the in the fourth quarter because the Jets get a couple of cheap scores or something. Um, I do like the Browns to control this game, but I don't think that necessarily means a complete whitewash here. So um, with Trevor Simeon and the Jets under uh, with Trevor Simeon and quarterback and the Jets kind of banged up and everything that's going on there. I just don't expect them to be able to put a lot of points on the board. And with that, I think that the Browns control the game. And then with that, they're able to control the clock with Nick Chubb. And I don't think they're going to just continually put it in the end zone time after time after time either. So uh, I lean towards the under in this one as well for those very reasons. Um, Running the ball keeps the clock running, of course, and obviously don't know that there's going to be enough firepower there for the Jets to pull their weight to get this thing on the overside here. Guys, as always, please like this video. Please let us know in the comments what you're doing. Please subscribe to the channel. Help us grow. We will do some cool stuff along the way that as we continue to grow here. We'll start giving away some gift cards. We'll start doing little things like that. So please be with us through the uh, through the course of this football season here. And of course, head to the lines. I mean, we have all kinds of cool things going on over here. Odds feeds, betting trackers, all kinds of things like that. The podcasts and uh, where you can legally bet across this great country of ours as we continue to expand into legalization. And as always, you can read the full write up at playpicks.com over there. As always, good luck on your bets tonight. And we'll see you guys on Thursday.